times to turn their phones off in order to interact with their immediate surroundings, they often look extremely discouraged. When we ask why, it's not because they refuse to unplug, it's because their parents will be angry if they can't get a hold of them. Some of them even say they see the need to unplug and reconnect as a family, but that the rest of the family won't get on board. We adults and parents can help change that. One way to do so is to participate in the National Day of Unplugging. Tonight, March 6th, starting at sundown, people across the U.S. will be forgoing their devices for 24 hours in order to connect with ourselves, our loved ones, and our communities in real time. We highly encourage you, your families, your small groups, your churches, your schools, or even your youth groups to participate. Knowing that so many other people will be doing the same thing at the same time can be really empowering and encouraging, as well as be enough to break the rhythms we might feel powerless to change. If you can't join in so last minute, that's okay. Set aside your own day or event in the next few weeks, planning plenty of other activities to fill in the time, and to remind yourself, your family, and your community of all the other good things with which God has blessed us in this life. And consider making it a regular event, since we all need regular resets that upset our habits and open our eyes and hearts to the deeper truths. Thanks for listening to The Culture Translator. This is the audio version of our weekly email newsletter. To get our free newsletter, sign up at axis.org slash ct. For other resources mentioned in this episode, check out the show notes. We're here to help you have meaningful conversations with Gen Z. Welcome to The Culture Translator by Axis. This week, we'll talk about an odd new dating app, teens seeking new vaping options, raising thoughtful citizens, and the fickle nature of stardom on TikTok. Starting off, Snack Pass. This new app for connecting college students with food and beverage vendors could also become their favorite dating app. Why is it exploding in popularity? The app has been on some college campuses for a few years, but according to TechCrunch, it recently got new funding to help it reach 100 new campuses in two years. Essentially, it works by making ordering from food vendors near a campus super simple and quick while offering discounts and freebies. Users can also gift items to other users, and they've started using the app's direct messaging to ask others out, according to Ozzy.com. For those who are in or about to go to college, it's yet another app that can be a great tool, but could also cause a lot of problems concerning money. It's easier to spend money when it doesn't feel like spending money, eating out constantly, and even relationships. Anyone remember when college prep was actually about college? Next, Juul is so last year. Vaping brand Juul was cool until adults and the government caught wind of it. So as we slowly get around to enacting new legislation to curb use by minors, NPR reports that teens have already taken their business elsewhere. Here's what makes it frustrating. Disposable vape pens like Puff Bar, Stig, and Mr. Vapor have proliferated, filling the void left by all the restrictions against Juul. These disposable pod mods are compact, cool-looking, easily hidden, and much more potent than traditional cigarettes, with one pod containing as much nicotine as two or three packs of cigarettes. Since laws and government enforcement never move as quickly as teen whims and interests, parents and other caring adults have to be the first line of defense. We must talk about vaping and its risks without fear-mongering or using scare tactics. For some helpful suggestions on how to approach the conversation with your teen, check out our Parents' Guide to Vaping. You can find a link to it in the show notes. Topic number three, raising thoughtful citizens. Gen Z cares about what's happening politically, so much so that 49% of voting age Gen Zers who are 18 to 23 plan to donate to a political campaign in 2020, according to a report on comparecards.com. Why is this surprising? The proportion of Gen Xers, 37%, and Boomers, 25%, who plan to do the same is much lower, despite those cohorts having more money. Of course, intent is not the same as action, but it seems that Gen Z is reminiscent of young people in the 1960s and 70s in their political concern. It's a great opportunity for families, churches, and schools to guide their fervor by teaching them to seek more than one perspective, ask good questions, weigh ideas against God's word, and pray for God's guidance in their lives. Most policies and candidates aren't as clear-cut as they seem, requiring them to learn wisdom, patience, and humility as they reach voting age. And here's our final culture topic of the week. TikTok has been a frequent subject of discussion at Axis simply because of its sudden rise to popularity and its simultaneous ability to baffle most people older than 24. And while lovers of the app cite its playfulness, randomness, and uniqueness as reasons why they prefer it to other social media platforms, there hasn't been a whole lot of data on how the app's pros might give way to a bevy of cons. If we look at other platforms as a reference, we know it often takes a while for that initial shine to wear off, but TikTok is, once again, proving to be different. As some TikTokers are already finding out, the app is unprecedented in its ability to skyrocket a person to success in mere days or even hours. But that fame can be wiped away just as easily, leaving the user confused and alone with no support system to turn to. One 16-year-old who was willing to open up to Vox about his experience and its impact said that it wasn't negativity or bullying that drove him away from the app, but rather what happened when the views and likes, which he'd amassed over the course of nearly a year after a few viral video hits, started to drop. From a teenager's perspective, becoming an influencer looks like an easy, fun way to make a living without relying on a traditional boring desk job. So it's no wonder more than half of 13 to 38-year-olds would become influencers if given the chance, according to a report by Morning Consult. But very few of them see what happens when the camera's not on or when the elusive likes simply stop coming. For the young man interviewed in the Vox article, that meant a lot of anxiety and doubt. He said, it's scary because it's the spiral of not ever feeling like you're enough and that leaves this mental scarring. Like with any fame, the negatives can be devastating without proper preparation, support, prayer, and community. And since the positives are always up front and center for anyone who's on social media, it's important that we also lovingly help aspiring teens think through both aspects and make healthy, godly decisions based on all the data, not just what they see. 
Thanks for listening to the Culture Translator by Axis. For more help in understanding teen culture and connecting with your kids, check out Axis.org, where you can find resources on a huge variety of topics, including vaping and TikTok. We're here to help you have meaningful conversations with Gen Z.